Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this. It's a box that I've pulled out of my trailer of treasures. A few of these items I have seen, this one in particular, but many of these items I have not seen. So we're going to go ahead and just set it aside and pull these out to kind of first come, first serve. Take a look at these items here. This case uh, TI and VIC. That's what I think is in this box mostly is TI related, TI-99 and VIC-20. In this case, some cassettes it says. So we've got Teach Yourself Basic, looks like a series, some VIC-20 cassettes. One cassette that is unmarked, so this is a mystery cassette in the mystery box. Uh, give me just a second, we're going to zoom in here and that way you guys can get a little, little bit of a closer look. There you go. So, cassette tapes, lots of them, cassette programs. We'll go ahead and set these aside right now. And then we'll get on to the next item here. Looks like another program. In this case, it's a flight simulator winging it. Pretty cool. I bet this paperwork hasn't been out of that bag since 1980. It's got a little manual with it. Oh yeah, check out check out these graphics. <laughs> Good stuff. So another program. We'll set this back in its bag here in just a bit. We'll see if we could kind of keep going here. Regarding cassettes, though, this is an item that I was aware of in this box. I chucked it in kind of last minute. Put a note to myself that I tested working 123. All buttons seem to work. So in January, I kind of had this out. Probably did some cleaning because it does look pretty good. I see a couple little scuffs and scratches, but overall, it's in pretty good shape. So this will be an item that gets listed on our eBay store here as well. Some joysticks. These are actually Texas Instrument joysticks. So they're in pretty good shape. The cord seems to be pliable. Many of these items are going to be sold as tested, not working, because I just simply don't have the time to kind of test everything. It tends to take a, quite a bit of time. I will wipe these down, though, just because I see some residue on them there. That way, when the next owner gets them, they'll, they'll appreciate it. Kind of a little extra time spent now. Uh, back to cassettes. So you guys know what this is. So this would plug into the Texas Instruments computer, and then these jacks here would plug into the cassette interface. So unlike this one here that has a dedicated, a dedicated plug that would go into the interface of the Commodore, this kind of just plugged into the TI-99, and then this allowed you to use uh, a variety of different cassette players, so then you could kind of load programs uh, games, software from cassette. So, very cool. Ah, how many of you guys remember these? I've had a few of these over the years. So this allowed you, usually with double-sided tape or Velcro, you would stick this to the back of your TV set, and then this would plug into where your 300 ohm antenna went, your TV 300 ohm would plug in here, and then this would plug into your game, your computer, or game console, whatever you had, Atari, or in this case, Texas Instruments. And then with this plugged in, you'd be able to switch between TV antenna or going to your computer. So very cool. I see that this kind of strain relief has come loose here cord still seems to be in pretty good shape. Flexible, it's not brittle. Yeah, neat find. Let's see, we're getting down towards the bottom of the barrel here. This very cool speech synthesizer. These are, believe it or not, really good sellers. Uh, we've sold quite a few of these. This would plug into the side of the TI-99 and then allow your computer to actually have that a Knight Rider-like voice. It would give a voice to your computer way ahead of its time. Let's see if we could look inside here, if this will open up. Yeah, so I don't see any corrosion in there. It looks to be in pretty good shape. Very neat. So this also, we'll probably just sell this as parts not working, and if the new owner gets it and it works, that's a bonus. Very cool. And then let's see what else we've got. 
oh, this was like with the joysticks here. So this is a joystick adapter. You know, I believe we've had a few of these Wyco. Every time I find a joystick, I tend to set it aside in a box, the ones that we haven't sold. So I'll probably go dig around and see if I could come up with, yeah, some of these Wyco joysticks, and then I could include it with this. This looks to be in really good shape. Looks to be almost unused. The cord is still shiny. It's got its little manual. Neat, yeah, it talks about the different joysticks uh, that this unit works with. Even works with trackballs. Very cool. Yeah, Radio Shack, Apple, Atari. Yeah, we recently just sold one of the trackballs that we had. I kind of refurbished it. That was a cool project. I'll set that aside for now. It looks like last item in this box, uh, programs for the TI home computer. I don't know if any of you guys remember. This is the way we used to have to put programs in our computer. You didn't have GitHub or Stack Overflow. You literally had to, for example, in this case, personal banking. You would follow these basic commands and you would type these out one by one into your computer all of these commands and, and then when you were done when you were done in this case you would have a working program or you would have to troubleshoot for the next four or five days one semicolon that you missed if you were to be if you type this out and you just missed one semicolon or just hit one number wrong you would be forced going back through line by line and try to figure out where your error was. Um, yeah, it was painful, really painful. <laughs> yeah, painful. <laughs> so those of you that remember working on, on, on this case, so screen speak, I bet, yeah, this will also work. In this case, this works with the speech synthesizer. So you could, oh, this is a shorty just a short little line of, of uh, commands here put into your TI-99 and then it would utilize this this here. I, maybe I should grab one of my TI-99s out and kind of give this a test and give this a test. It's such a short bit of code. I mean, believe it or not, I have PTSD from uh, <laughs> the years of doing some of these uh, read from book programs and then just having again one semicolon wrong we didn't have debuggers back in the day so it was horrible but very cool if you guys are interested in something like that let me know because i can dig one of these out i have a good working ti-99 that i use for testing and then i could kind of plug this in now i've kind of seen such a short program it <laughs> makes me say oh yeah just go ahead and do it i should uh, give it a shot if you guys are interested let me know on that note, any of these uh, videos that you find on my channel that are interesting, uh, let me know if what you're what you guys are into. If you if you enjoy this kind of video format, um, I've done a couple where I've done some of the cleaning of the products. I'll be launching those here soon. Testing some repairs when I get a chance, and I kind of am able to do a repair. I kind of like to record that as well. So yeah, let me know what you guys are interested in and I'll do my best to kind of steer the channel that way because I'm really unsure what you guys would like to see except for the bottom of this box because it is now empty. So I'm going to go ahead and get these items kind of cleaned up, put them back in the box, photograph them, and then uh, we'll get them listed on our eBay store. If you'd like to check out our eBay store, just search sellers for at Bad Dog Electronics. We also have a website at baddogelectronics.co. If you found anything in this video useful, entertaining, horrible, just let us know. We really appreciate the feedback. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of the day or evening, depending on what part of the world you're at. And we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.